Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to do another conversion from a decimal number into a 32-bit floating point format using IEEE 754. All right, so let's remind ourselves really quickly how we do this. We take the decimal number and we break it down into a fixed point binary representation, meaning that the whole number is converted to binary separate from the fractional component. And then we convert that into a binary scientific notation by floating or shifting the exponent so that we have only one bit to the left of the radix point, and then multiplying by a times two to the exponent. And then steps three, four, and five are conversions into the IEEE 754 standard. Three is determine the sign bit, then you determine the biased exponent, then you determine the mantissa with an implied leading one, and then you combine everything back together into a full 32-bit number. Okay, so let's do a different style of number where we're going to float the radix point a different way. So commonly you'll see a number where it's like negative five e to the negative two base 10. What does that mean? It basically means that's scientific notation for a number in decimal where you've already done the shifting. So this actually represents negative 0 0.05 decimal okay and that's just how we kind of write it in terminal you know in engineering notate not even engineering notation but just regular notation okay so let's start with the first uh conversion which is i want to convert this into a fixed point binary so we'll do the whole number first and there's no whole number so we're done <laughs> okay so then let's do the fractional component so we're going to bring that down so we're going to have 0 0.05 multiplied by 2 and then we're going to track the product and the whole number and then what we're going to do is we'll track the whole number as our msb okay and let's see how this goes so we're going to have we're going to have 2 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.1. And we bring that fella over, store the 0. And then we bring this down, 0 0.1. Multiply that by 2. We get 0 0.2. Bring that little guy over, you get a 0. We bring 0 0.2 down, and we get 0 0.4. Bring this little fella over, that's a 0. And we get 0 0.4 multiplied by 2. We get 0 0.2. Eight, bring this little fellow over, and lots of zeros here. And then we bring this over, 0 0.8 times two, and we get 1.6. Ooh, we finally got our first one. And then we bring 0 0.6 over, multiplied by two, and you get 1.2. And that's a little bring that little fellow over. <clears throat> and then we bring down 0 0.2, multiplied by two, and we get 0 0.4. Bring this little guy over, and then we're like, this is going to go forever, isn't it? Because we have recognized that this right here is the same calculation as that. That means that this, these steps right here are going to repeat forever. So we have a pattern of 0, 0, 1, 1 that will repeat forever. So when I write out my fixed point, what I can do is I can say, okay, I got 0 dot, and then my MSB is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, and then I'm going to have 0, 0, 1, 1 repeating forever. So 0, 0, 1, 1 repeating forever. Okay, so we know that since it repeats forever, we're going to have a little inaccuracy, but that's all right. All right, so then step two is to put this into binary scientific notation. In this situation, we're floating the other way now. The other examples, we were floating to the left. Now we're going to go float to the right. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we are we floated four, so now our number is times two to the negative four. Excuse me, I didn't go, I need to have one digit to the left of the radix point. I have to go five, don't I? Yeah, negative five. Very important, okay? So now this is interesting. So if we float it over one, two, three, four, five, what does our number look like? Well, let's let's rewrite it, right? So we're gonna have one dot one. Okay, but we're all, we're all the way over into the repeating portion of this. So you can think about it is these ones right here were part of this repeating part. So it was actually zero, zero, one, one, and then we go zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, forever, forever, forever. So actually what's happening is that we had to fill in these bits to get the repeating portion in there. And even though there were repeating zeros that were part of this leading into it, we don't count the leading zeros, but we had to fill this in in order to get the bits that we have. So this actually converts into 1.1 
zero, zero, one, one, where this is repeating, and we go to the negative five. Okay, so we did it. That is scientific notation of the number. All right, so now let's go to part three, which is the easy step, is what's the sine bit? Well, it's negative, so the sine is equal to a one, meaning that's a negative number. And then let's go over here, let's go up here for our biased exponent. The exponent is negative five, right? And then what we have to do is add 20, 127 to that base 10. And so we end up with 122 base 10. And notice that this is we add this a bias because it's shifted. We, we don't want a negative number in the encoded eight bits of the bias exponent, but we don't also want to use two's complement. So what they do is you shift this up. So here's an example of it's like you had zero and you have negative five, and then you could have exponents appear, they add 127 to it so that everything shifts up so that this is now the equivalent. So now this is like, you know, it's basically it's zero to 255 instead of being like positive 127 to negative 128, but you can't use 255s and zeros because they're reserved. So it really goes from one to 254. Regardless, you apply the bias and that ends up being 122 base 10. Now that's not the actual number that we have. We need to convert that into binary so we could use our algorithm that we did over here but we kind of know by this time it's just zero one 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 zero one zero base two so that's one two three four five six seven eight so there is our biased exponent and finally we get to the old mantissa so i come over to here so this is the mantissa the part that's separate from the times two to the negative five, but we have an implied one because we always have one to the left of the radix point. So our mantissa is actually represented as one zero zero one one, but that's a repeating part right there. So that is what we have. So that is the, we're gonna repeat that for over and ever and ever and ever. And we can draw, we can enter that into our field when we do part six, which is the final number. So let's do this as a 32 bit number and let's assemble the field. So we're going to have a sign bit of one and that came from this little guy right there. And now we're going to have an exponent, a biased exponent that consists of eight bits. So that comes from here. So that's going to be zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero. Okay, feeling good. And now we're going to have our mentissa with this repeating fraction in it, okay? So I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna say, all right, I've got one, and then I'm gonna do zero, zero, one, one, and I'm gonna put a little marker over it to represent that I'm repeating. And I can repeat, actually, another one, two, three, four times. So I can go zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Oh, we run out of room here, so I'm gonna get smaller. Zero, zero, one, one, right? And then we got, zero zero one one and we're almost up to the number of bits we can have we can have the pattern one two three four five full times one two three four five and that's 20 now we're at 21 bits so i got two more to go so we just do zero zero and the one one would have been right there but we don't get those because we only got 32 bits so if i go back this is my number all right so this is bit position zero this is bit position 22, this is 23, this is 30, and this is 31. So I've done it. That is now the 32-bit floating point number that I have converted to. All right, so let's go to our calculator. So let's go back here and see what this gives me. So I've got negative 0 0.05. We'll convert that, and we end up with... Here we go. Okay, sign bit, correct. Then we got zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero. That's right. And then here comes our leading one. And now here comes our repeating pattern. So we have zero, zero, one, one. We have zero, zero, one, one. We have zero, zero, one, one. We have zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, and zero, zero. So it worked, right? Except this is an algorithm written by somebody that imp is implementing exactly what we've done with our manual conversion. So let's come over here and run this on a Linux server and see what it gives us. So in this situation, I'm gonna go negative 0.05. And what do we get? Look at this now. Sign bit is correct. X bias exponent 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. That's correct. Now here comes our mantissa. 1, good, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0011, 0011, 0011, 
zero one. What is this? It's different, but that's okay. Remember, this is now on a Linux server. This could be due to just randomness. It could be rounding, but this is the real hardware taking care of it. And it's as accurate as it can be. And as you go further and further into the number of bits, you get into the situation where the precision isn't as tight and that's fine. That's as accurate as we can be with a 32 bit floating point number, but you did it. You've converted negative five e to the negative two or also called negative 0.05 decimal into a 32 bit floating point number using the IEEE 754 format. Nice work and we'll see you.